Hey YouTube, Bad Wolf Mom here. Uh, recently, we were approached by Zero Shoes to become an affiliate, which I thought was pretty cool. We've been at least marketably involved and invested in this company when my son decided he didn't want any shoes and we needed to find something to put on his feet. He was rebelling against his orthotics. Uh, I had another kid who was in full on AFO braces and we were really struggling for footwear in general just to make him happy. I stumbled upon barefoot shoes and started investigating different companies and we found zero shoes, which we were lucky enough that Jonah was old enough to be in at least the smallest size of a men's shoe. At the time, they didn't have children's shoes. They do now, so yay. If you're interested in that, they do have those. Um, at least in the Prio, and I believe in one of their sandals, they started carrying the children's sizes. But we um, put Jonah in those shoes, and it became a family journey from that point on because they were the only shoes he'd put on. He loved them. Um, I got curious, and I got a pair, and found out why he loved them. <laughs> They're super comfortable. But one of the other benefits of this was after a while, I noticed he wasn't rolling his feet in. And after a little longer, I noticed that his knees weren't buckling and then he was stronger. Um, that without the shoes, he was walking around stronger. Um, got curious enough to start to transition my other son out of AFOs and crazy supportive shoes into these shoes and noticed the same difference. He wasn't in towing anymore. He was stable on his feet. He was balanced. He wasn't struggling. As I did more research, found that if you put an arm in a cast or if you put any limb and restrict it or support it, that limb gets weaker. Well, I'm going to assume that the same is going to probably happen with your feet. So if you watch any of Stephen Sashin's videos, he's um, one of the owners of Zero Shoes, him and his wife, Lena. Um, Lena doesn't do a lot of videos, but you can tell her mission and point are true to that. They really do believe that feet should be doing what they naturally do. They should be strong on their own and not have to fight through thick and five inches of sole and be pitched forward. One of uh, the major principles, and I want you to kind of look at, these are all of my zero shoes. <laughs> I have a pair of hikers, a pair of, uh, trail, um, Runners, I have a their lightweight running shoe. I have the Z Trek, um, like hiker sandal, and then I have the Prios. I have on my ugly toes here. Um, my Z Trek. I'm oh, sorry, that over there is the Z Trail. These are the Z Trek. They're a little thinner. Um, to look at them, you're going to think, oh my gosh, there's nothing to them. Well, there shouldn't be anything to them. Your feet have a lot of nerve endings, so you need to feel the ground. Um, people fall and trip for all kinds of reasons. I can tell you one thing I've never done in these shoes, fall or trip. Because uh, my nerve endings can feel the ground. They know where they're going, and they don't fall. I have a pair here of shoes. I do still use these. I'm not going to say that I am exclusively to zeros. There are times where I have a 28 pound pack on my back and I'm walking down a very um, disturbing, destructive type trail. And yeah, my feet are not that tough yet. They're getting there, but they're not that tough yet. So there are times where I do have to resort to a little more cushioning, but I want to show you the difference here between the um, their daylight hiker and the Hoka 1-1 shoe that I will occasionally throw on when I have a heavy pack and the trail is destructive. So this is the Hoka 1-1. One one. <laughs> Take a look at that sole. Um, I have worn Ultras and I really like the zero drop on those and um, this is the trade-off I guess because it doesn't really have a zero drop but you see how much higher the heel is than the toe if you trace that line. Um, the one reason that I will wear these ones is because of the fact that I unfortunately do have to resort to some cushioning if I have a heavy pack and the trail is going to destroy my feet. Um, but that's that shoe. This is the Daylight Hiker. Complete zero drop to the ground. I don't know if you can see. There is a liner in here. It's kind of dark, but let's see if I can hold it up into the light. No, you can't see, but there's not much 
cushioning or padding to that, you can actually feel the ground through the sole, so you know what you're stepping on. You know the level of the ground that can tell your brain, hey, yo, uh, put your foot this way because <laughs> you're about to go over. Um, this has a Hirachi-inspired inspired lacing system. that You can see the blue ribbon piece that's threaded through there holds the um, sole to your foot almost like a cradle, and it's just enough um, wrap around that your foot does not roll around inside the shoe at all. Most hiking shoes, you have to buy a size or two, almost half size to two sizes above your actual size, just so that your toes don't run into the front of the shoe and you end up damaging your toenails, hence my ugly toes, because I was in something like this for so long. But I don't have to do that with those. I can buy my actual size shoe because the the sole is so flexible. I'm going to roll this thing up here. I'm going to show you. <laughs> you can just roll this up with one hand. Okay. Literally roll this up in one hand because the shoe bends with you. What you can't do with this thing <laughs> is roll it up in one hand. You can't even bend it. Um, but yeah. It's protective. It is, and it has its place, but for most everyday uses, for lighter weight packs, for trails that are not gonna bruise the crap out of the bottom of my foot, <laughs> these work fantastic. Um, so I'll wear these two on the trail typically, and sometimes those, and sometimes these. For street wear and for work, and this is a question that I actually recently got from somebody, is do they make good work shoes or is it just like an outdoor shoe? This isn't anything shoe. I have gone almost exclusively to this. Like you said, the only time that I break out those Hoka's or a pair of Ultras is when I am dealing with extenuating circumstances. Like, cause there are times where we're walking 20 miles a day on some really rough terrain. And these, while they have their place, I have not found a zero shoe that I can end the day of a 20 mile hike with a almost 30 pound pack on my back and be happy. <laughs> my feet are getting there. I'm up to like five to 10 miles in either one of those with a pack on my back and I'm okay, but it, you gotta build up to it. Your feet have muscles just like everything else and I'm getting there. These are what I wear to work though. You can see there's nothing to this. It's an extremely light shoe. Um, I'm a nurse. I spend 12 plus hours on my feet running around. Um, but yeah, see how flexible that is? It lets your foot do what your foot's supposed to do. You can feel the ground with these things. You can see if you look at this, the shape, I curled it up, but I flattened it back out. If you look at the shape of the sole, nice wide toe box. You can actually see where this comes up and is actually kind of molded to the bottom of my foot. Now that I have an arch, I didn't used to have one. <laughs> now I do. Um, just because my feet have gotten so strong wearing these, I'm not supporting sh my foot because I don't think your foot needs supported. It's not something that should happen. You should be making your feet strong so that they can support the rest of your body. Um, I don't know if you can go back and Google Steven Sessions video on arches. But an arch is super strong if you press on the top of it. But if you go underneath it, you know how to break an arch would be to support it. Um, it's one of the strongest structures out there. And you have three in your feet. And when you support an arch, it gets weaker. So you make an arch stronger by putting pressure from above. And that's what your body does. That's why that's how your feet are designed. To go against what every shoe company is going to tell you out there that's a big name shoe, you need support, you need cushioning, you need all this. I'm really, after having watched what happened with my kids and watched what happened with my own feet, strongly disagree with that. Uh, I think your feet need to be trusted to be feet and they need to become strong and these shoes help them to do that because you can't clearly walk through gravel pits anymore. Our feet are not toughened up like that. Like if you start at a really young age and start running through rough terrain, you know, when you're a little kid, nothing really bothers you and you kind of grow up that way. Um, that's one way to deal with it. But 
uh, as an adult who has been shoved into shoes for years and I figure skate so I wear a really crazy um, boot on the ice that messes with my feet. These are absolute heaven to step into after because they let my toes go back out. Um, one other thing that happened when I started to wear these shoes, and if you look at my toes, they are now all aligned. Prior to wearing these, these two toes, I don't know if I can make them do it anymore, from being shoved into skates and shoved into shoes with pointy toes, I'm not kidding, they overlapped like this. I've been wearing zero shoes for probably three, four years now. My toes don't do that anymore. They spread out, they wiggle, they can work. Um, this one's even straightening out. And this one had been busted and crooked, but it's gotten much better and it's almost flat now. So it can take some time. Uh, if you talk to my dad about zero shoes, he'll tell you that he um, had developed neuropathy uh, in both of his feet and they told him, you know, diabetic shoes type of a system, you know, special socks. Nothing was really helping him. I had bought him a pair of Z Trek sandals. I really like that. He started walking around in them. He's like, you know what? These feel better. Um, and he is now on his second pair of Z Trek sandals. Um, recently ordered a pair of their shoes. I'm not sure if he got the Prios or the HFSs, which are the colorful ones that I wear to work. Um, but he is so sold on them that he now wants to transition to wearing them 100% of the time because the neuropathy in his feet got better. His toes were able to spread out. He got better circulation. He started using the arches and the muscles in his feet as he was walking around and just by wearing these shoes got better. Um, I will show you the difference in the tread on some of these. This is the HFS. This is the Terraflex. Um, this is the Daylight Evo. This is the second edition. They, they changed some things out of the first one. They don't sell the first one anymore. Um, I do have a pair of those somewhere, I think, in my basement. <laughs> But um, this is the Prio, and the Prio and the Eve, the um, Daylight Hiker both have the same type of sole. This is the uh, Trek, and Z Trek sandal has a little more cushioning to it because it's made for a trail. And then this is the Z. Um, oh, sorry, that is the Z Trail. I keep getting these mixed up. Z Trail, and then this is the Z Trek, and you can see the difference. That is much thinner. This is made for trail. It has an extra layer of foam, but you can still feel the ground. And so it's just a little more cushioning. But you can see the difference in the treads. Um, they have the little triangle, little nubbies going two different directions, if you notice. This does an amazing deal for traction. Um, this one was their newest one. It's inspired, inspired like a road tire. Because it's a road running shoe, but like I said, I wear this to work. <laughs> um, and it's it's one of my favorites. I actually wear it every other time too, but um, like I said, trails, those three. Road is this and this and my other sandals. I would not own all these if I didn't believe in them. Um, if you are interested at all in trying these out, and understand there is an adjustment period, you, if you're going to take this road of barefoot shoes, you also have to understand that there is an adjustment. You may be going from some of the most supportive shoes out there with a huge arch support and crazy cushioning. You know, at one point I wore dance goes nursing shoes and I, I can tell you that I found out what the dance go twist was way early. And I think I lasted maybe two months in those shoes because I kept twisting my ankle. No joke. They are, those of you that are out there that know what a dance go clog is, <laughs> there's no lateral support. It's a very stiff front back rocker shoe. Huge arch support. Um, did not react very well to it. But some of you may be going from a shoe like that to something like this, and it does take your feet a little bit to figure out, oh my goodness, uh, you're using me again. Hold on a second, let me readjust. And if you watch any of the videos put out by Zero Shoes, they'll tell you it does take a bit of getting used to. 
that you wear them for a couple hours a day and then just build up from there because it is like a workout for new muscles. And if you have ever tried to start a workout program or start something that is physical, it does take a little bit of adapting. Once you do though, and you fight through that, that rough patch where you're, oh my goodness, I'm sore. Um, you come out on the other side so much stronger and it's like you don't ever want to go back. It feels weird for me to step into those um, Hoka hiking boots that I showed you that I will still occasionally wear if I know I'm going to be in some very rough terrain and this isn't going to be enough um, to get me through. Because, like I said, I, I know people who have hiked trails barefoot and in sandals and... I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. I recently put a video up on Facebook where I had worn these sandals on a gravel trail. And if you want to toughen up your feet, <laughs> I guess it's one way to do it. Wear sandals on a gravel trail. I don't know what I was thinking, but I did. I walked six miles on the trail with those shoes and I came out stronger on the other side. And now I feel like I could probably step into those hiking shoes or those you know, either one of those two and come out on the other side, walk even further and be stronger at that point because it takes a little bit of toughening up. It's like building up calluses, if you will. Um, if I look at my figure skates, when I would skate, you know, when I first came back after the break, cause you know, no ice rinks open for three months. Um, the bruises and the calluses, that I had worked out and my ankles got tougher holding within that boot that I wear, a lot of them had gone away. And when I first stepped back in, I can tell you the first two trips out, I got out of those boots and I'm like, ooh, okay, that's sore. I'm still like bruised or calloused over. It takes a minute to build that up. And it's like anything that you do. But I will tell you, coming out on the other side, you feel so much better. I feel much stronger. I feel much ba much more balanced. I'm not falling over. Um, if you talk to people about stories about making this journey, a lot of um, older people are now getting into these shoes because you lose balance. You, it's one of the situations, if you don't use it, you lose it. Well, if you lose that sensation at the bottom of your feet and your rest of your body doesn't know how to react, and as you get older, you tend to lose coordination, this serves to tell us that maybe throughout the years, if we can continue to use those balance and skills and the nerve endings in the bottom of our feet, telling our brain what to do, then maybe we can avoid coordination problems and falls in the future as we get older. So it's something to consider as well. Basically this 20 minute video that I'm ranting about absolutely love zero shoes guys. Check them out. If you feel like you want to order, um, something please message me get in touch with me I have a link that you can go through but definitely check it out